Today, we are covering the 2022 defensive recruits. We are going to cover all the prospects relevant to Texas's recruiting board. We are going to go position by position, recruit by recruit, to see which prospects UT has their eyes on. Eric is back for part two of our early 2022 recruiting series to talk Denver Harris, Bryce Anderson, Jacoby Matthews, and many more names. He'll break down the recruit evaluations and how Texas is doing in their recruitment. I gotta show Inside Texas some love for providing such top-notch insight. The whole team there is really impressive, and you'll leave more informed every single time. Inside Texas is offering a free premium account until the spring game on April 24th. Go to InsideTexas.com to sign up. Link in the description. As you know, this video is sponsored by Last Stand Hats. Go check out their new designs dropping all the time, and pick up a new hat for the new season. They have all sorts of designs and hat types, all officially licensed by the University of Texas. Use promo code TEXASHOMER, all caps, for 10% off your hat purchase at laststandhats.com. Link in the description. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so I can bring you bigger and better Texas Longhorns content. If you like what you see, then consider joining as a channel member for exclusive perks. It'll help me go full-time making UT content. And now it's game time. Let's take a look into the defensive recruits for the 2022 cycle. We have some really impressive recruits that could be difference makers for us. The new defensive coaching staff seems to have hit the ground running with this class. So without further ado, let's get into it. What's up, Eric? Thanks for coming on, man. You ready to cover the defensive recruits? Yeah, thanks for having me back. Um, yeah, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Kwiatkowski uh, stocks the shelves. You know, there's, there's some big needs in the class and, and Texas is off to a good start. All right, we will start with the defensive line and work our way out. Defensive tackle has some interesting names. First, let's talk about our only commit and Chris Ross out of North Shore. Your viewers should know him quite well. You did that excellent video on him. Uh, Inside Texas is very, very excited about Chris Ross. He's, uh, you know, exactly what the doctor orders for this class. You need an athletic interior guy. Uh, I don't know if, if you some of your viewers who are on Twitter probably saw that he had a 61 foot shot put. Uh, with, you know, not a lot of technique going on. That's an exceptional shot, but it's indicative of power and explosiveness. Uh, that stuff shows up on tape, too. Very exciting prospect. That actually has us thinking that he's even higher. You know, he might end up being a top 10 player in state. Chris Ross will keep moving up through the ranks. Now let's go on to the non commits Texas is looking at Zach Swanson out of Phoenix. What does the tape tell us? First thing that jumps out about Zach Swanson is his, his uh, ability off the ball. He's very quick off the ball. It's, uh, it's almost like he understands the snap count uh, you know, as, as well as the center does. Uh, so that's, that's a, there's a huge value there. Obviously, you become disruptive if you, if you can match that with low pads and power. Um, so, it, you know, that sets a good floor for him. Uh, you know, he's about 255 already. If he arrived on campus at that weight, uh, you know, there's a chance that he could play the jack position, but really his, his best value is going to be as a disruptor, as, as a three tech. Um, you know, he's not his, his game isn't entirely all that different from Chris Ross's, actually. You know, I don't think he has that same sort of uh, freakishness, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of talent there with Swanson. Texas likes him quite a bit. Um, you know, he's he's been fond of UT really pretty much since uh, Sarkeesian was hired. His dad played football at Stanford. Uh, Stanford isn't really in the mix. Uh, but that canceled out Cal. Uh, and he likes USC, and I believe Oregon and Kentucky are his other top three that make up uh, the rest of his four. So uh, UT actually uh, probably has the best chance of landing him. Good stuff, man. We have Jaden Scarlett from Flower Mound up next. What should fans know about Jaden? 6'2", 260, uh, tests well in the, in the uh, quickness uh, measurements, uh, you know, gets off the ball well, uh, you know, kind of – has a low man advantage uh, that's important uh, in the trenches. Um, you know, really good player, three technique long term, uh, really more of a disruptive. He's not going to really stack and shed. Uh, he's going to get upfield and, and try to get in the backfield and make plays. How is Texas doing in his recruitment? Texas is kind of new to the uh, new to the equation for him. A little, it's a recent offer, uh, so we're still getting to know exactly what what uh, where Texas's uh, footing is there. Uh, I do think that Texas has a good chance and then they might have a, a decision to make. You know, it's uh, kind of like what we talked about with offensive line uh, with Cole Hudson and Connor Roberts. And there could just be a numbers issue when it comes to uh, Jaden Scarlett and Zach Swanson. Next up is a talented defensive tackle in Jare Bledsoe out of Bremen. So what's his eval and is Texas even relevant in his recruiting? Jare Bledsoe has as much upside as, as anybody in the class. Uh, 
any player. It doesn't matter who we're talking about. He's, he's, he's got that much upside. He can be a top 10 NFL draft pick if he puts in the work. Just a very freakish composite of size and, and athleticism. Uh, you know, and, and you know what that tells you? That tells you that the that, that demand for him is going to be crazy and, and those uh, recruitments get a little wild. Um, so his phone's going to be ringing off the hook quite a bit. Texas does have a good in there with Bo Davis uh, building a strong relationship. OU also has a strong relationship with him. Uh, you don't know, you know, if, uh, proximity, uh, if proximity is a factor, uh, then UT and a and are, are going to uh, have, have the advantages. But I, I tend to think it's going to end up being a regional battle. But, you know, Alabama, like, you know, in accordance with what I just said about his talent level, Alabama is going to be hanging around too. Doesn't Bledsoe have an official visit to Texas coming up? So June is going to be the most uh, June's going to be the most important month of the cycle as far as recruiting goes, and uh, you know, a big part of that is Dre Bledsoe taking an official visit towards the end of uh, towards the end of uh, uh, June. You know, <clears throat> each class sets up differently for a coach. Uh, uh, Bo Davis is walking into a bit tougher situation uh, when it comes to defensive line recruiting, but this is one that he has a chance to win. Uh, you know, I'm not saying he should win it, but I'm saying he has a chance. And, and it's one that, you know, Texas, if Texas wins this one, that, that defensive line class is off and running, especially with Chris Ross already committed. Cool, man. Glad he's locked in. Next, we turn to Bear Alexander. He was originally at Denton Ryan, but he just transferred to Brewer in Fort Worth. He's been a hot name in the Texas defensive tackle scene, and Texas was in the mix. But Georgia swooped in out of nowhere for a surprise commit. So do we stay on him? Bear Alexander's so talented. Of course, you stay on him as long as possible. Uh, you know, I, the, the saying that I have is recruit him through the whistle. He's that good, especially with one tech being a, being a big need in the class. You know, you've got to uh, you got to backfill these uh, these big boys that they have in Keandre Coburn and Tavondre Sweat with the next big thing. Uh, and Big Bear is, uh, you know, he's right in line with those guys as far as talent. Um, you know, when they're that big and that talented, they start coming out of the woodwork. And you know, Georgia came in and stole them uh, pretty much out from everybody's nose. Yeah, we have to keep adding depth to nose, even though we are set there at the moment. We need to keep backloading, like you said. Let's talk about the out-of-state defensive tackles UT has their eye on. What's the eval on Dominique Orange from Missouri? Again, yeah, one tech. They have plenty of they have plenty of options with uh, three tech, but one tech is going to be a bit tougher to find in this class if they can't flip bear. Uh, Dominique is a true one tech, uh, more in line with the Keandre Coburn type. Uh, he's he's a big, thick dude. Uh, tough to move, and he has a little, he has a little agility to him, a little bounce to him for being such a big boy. So he's gonna he's gonna uh, officially visit in June, I believe, uh, and, and we'll see if Texas can make a move for him there. We have another big dude, in Aaron Bryant, out of Mississippi. So is Bo Davis working on securing him as well? Yeah, Aaron Bryant, I'm a huge fan of. This is uh, this is kind of like a bear analog. Um, you know, six four, three hundred. He's not not as squatty as as uh, Dominique Orange or, or you know, how, who I was saying, Coburn, kind of more like Sweat. Big guy moves well, uh, man. If they could get him, it's it's a, it's time to celebrate. I don't even know what his rating is, but you watch his tape, and, and he's a he's a freaking stud. So um, he's going to visit in June. That's going to be a big time for Bo Davis. If they can get that kid locked up, celebrate. Don't even pay attention to whatever the ranking is. Just just go out and celebrate. Nice. Our last defensive tackle is Anthony Lucas out of Scottsdale, Arizona. So does Texas have a shot there? Uh, well, one of the worst things in the last five years are these top tens. So, you know, there's a huge difference between one, two, three, and then the rest of them. Uh, these kids usually have an idea. If you can put together a top ten, you could probably put together a top three. Uh, so I don't think that Texas is a, is a real player in this one, which is unfortunate. Uh, he's kind of that longer uh, athletic guy, sort of like uh, Alfred Collins, Vernon Broughton, where, you know, he could be a, 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 a defensive end in a three-man front or an athletic three-tech or even a one-tech. Uh, I just don't – yeah, I haven't heard much rumbling on the Texas side of them having a great shot here. But, man, he, he's really good. Um, you know, he, he's about as good as you're going to find as, uh, as far as defensive linemen go. That's a bummer, but you can't win them all, I guess, even though I'd, I would like to. Let's take a step back and give an overview of what Bo Davis is looking to achieve with this batch of defensive tackles. Well, Chris Ross, that's a nice floor for him. You know, very athletic guy, huge upside. Uh, now, it's, now, the, now, now the task is to complement him with another guy that could probably play three or one. You know, as these guys get older, these three techs can grow into one techs over time. Uh, and you don't necessarily have to be 330 pounds to play one tech anyways. So you want to find another three tech or another guy that has that, that versatility. And then one tech is going to be one of the bigger priorities in the class uh, coming down the stretch because one hasn't really availed himself as a, as a, as a lock for him. So it's hard to find. It's hard to know who that one tech is going to be. Uh, but he's out there, and they're bringing in some intriguing guys. If they can get the kid from Mississippi, that's a good one. All right, time to move on to defensive ends. 
So with modern defense, it can be a little confusing to understand how strong side defensive ends and weak side defensive ends translate to Kwiatkowski's defense. The new position types are called the Jack and the X backer. So can you break that down for the fans real quick? Yeah, the Jack is your traditional strong side defensive end in this defense. He's going to line up oftentimes over the, the tackle and tight end. Uh, and then your X is your weak side defensive end, which uh, is commonly referred to uh, or you'll, you'll recognize as the Joseph Osai position. It's going to be a it's going to be a bit of a longer, leaner guy that profiles to uh, uh, to, to pass rushing, but also he's got to have the athleticism to drop. He's the one when uh, when defensive coordinators get creative with and and disguise blitzes, they might drop him uh, in favor of somebody else uh, uh, coming to bring pressure. So it's basically weak side defensive end versus strong side defensive end. Strong side is the jack, weak side is the X. Uh, not much else has changed. They just you know they just don't have their hand in the ground. All right. First, I wanted to cover Ernest Cooper out of Arlington Martin, but I heard there's some bad news there. It's a bummer because that kid is awesome. So, what's the word on Ernest? Ernest, yeah, he released his top five, and it was uh, Texas was absent, uh, which it's a bit surprising, uh, but not entirely so. It just tells me that uh, it just tells me that the staff knew what uh, what anybody that's talked to Ernest knows uh, all along that you know he's going to go to Stanford. Uh, and there's not much intrigue left in this one. So it was surprising that Texas didn't make the top five, but, you know, I'm assuming they bowed out. I haven't, I haven't gotten the exact information on that that I need, but, uh, you know, that kid's going to Stanford. I've never talked to a kid and been so sure a kid was going to go to a, a school as I was talking to him. He, he basically gave me Stanford uh, commit quotes without committing. All right, now we have a big name from Duncanville and Omari Aber. Fans ask me all the time, but I've never heard him mentioned by Texas Insiders. So what's his evaluation, and is Texas even in the race to land him? Yeah, Abor's got a great build and, and great footwork to go along with it. You know, he's, he's a basketball player at Duncanville, which is a national power. Uh, it just tells you how well he can move. Um, but, you know, it's um, – yeah, you could tell who's uh, – you can tell who's getting good information on that and who's not by the questions they ask. You know, if somebody's asking me about Sabian Bird last December, I'm just, they're not paying attention. They're not getting good information. They're just following it on Twitter or something. I don't know, but if it's kind of like right now. It's a, if you're asking about Omari Abor, you're, <laughs> you're out of the loop. Texas isn't, Texas isn't getting that kid, man. Wish him well. He's probably going to go to, you know, OU or, or Ohio state. So um, he, he's, you know, you stay in the, you stay in the hunt if you can, he's that good, but um, you know, don't get your hopes up. All right, so Aber is a non-starter. So what about Justice Finkley out of Alabama? He's coming on an official visit on June 25th to Texas. So what's the word on Finkley? He's kind of a smaller uh, Jaden Scarlett where, you know, that, that means that he has a chance to stay at that strong side defensive end, which, of course, we're calling the Jack. Um, you know, very powerful guy, uh, he, you know, able to knife through the defensive line or the offensive line. Uh, he's got some good quickness, maybe a little bit of tightness, which keeps him from being uh, more highly rated. Um you put in a straight line that gets pretty devastating. Uh, so, you know, uh, Alabama's more focused on a guy named Curtis Perry, who's, who's, who's similar, but has a little bit more of that flexibility that, that's a little absent from uh, Finkley. Uh, and so that's good. So that means, you know, that gives Texas a better chance of dealing with those other guys. You know, beating uh, Auburn is doable. Beating, beating Alabama is a, a much tougher test. So, you know, Finkley's going to visit in June, and it's another one, you know, get these out-of-state guys to campus and see what they're saying afterwards. You know, what they're saying before doesn't matter. You know, what, what they're saying afterwards what, is what's going to count. Then we have Derek Brown out of Texas High and Texarkana. So what makes Derek a talented player? Texas High had Clayton Smith and, and Derek Brown last year, which is just an embarrassment of riches. <clears throat> Both those guys uh, profile to the X or weak side defensive end sort of role. Uh, Derek is, is a little bit longer uh, than Clayton and maybe not quite as uh, filled out, but very athletic uh, and got tons of bend to him. Um, maybe more like a, uh, this won't hit with the fans, but it should uh, kind of like Byron, Byron Vaughn's as an athlete and, and it's sort of a build. So it's going to take a little bit of time for him to put on the weight, uh, but just natural mover. Uh, you know, it's kind of like a, he's kind of like an overgrown wide receiver playing, uh, playing on, on the edge. So, uh, Texas is going to have to do well on that visit. You know, it's Clayton's in his ear about OU. Um, some other schools are circling around too, even likes Colorado. Uh, but he's, he's a big need. He's definitely a big need. He's talented. Um, I'm not sure what the uh, consensus is on him now uh, from a ranking standpoint, but we had him uh, we had him at number 17, I believe, in our initial uh, 2022 rankings, which is pretty high for a guy – uh, it, you know, not many people are talking about. That's the guy you guys should be talking about. Tell people to talk about Derek Brown, not Omari Abor. <laughs> Quit stargazing, man. Quit stargazing. Quit, you know, go 
use, use your precious time to follow recruiting on the guys that are, are, are tangible. Our last defensive end is DJ Wesselak out of Missouri. How's Texas looking there? Man, if, uh, if you put a top five on the covet list, uh, you know, you get, you get to make the call on which kid's going where. He might be in the top five uh, for Texas as far as uh, just, just an all-out need. They really need edge guys. Uh, he could play X or Jack, which tells you quite a bit if you're paying attention. It, you know, it's, it tells you that he can play, play strong against the run and has a bigger frame, but also athletic enough to get, get back into his own drops if he has to. Uh, good pass rusher. Tough competition for him, man. It's going to be uh, Clemson, Notre Dame, most likely uh, to battle battling with Texas. But again, get him get him to campus. You know, Mac Brown used to be able to get these guys to campus, and they'd, they'd be leaving thinking one school, and, and or they'd, they'd arrive thinking one school and leave thinking Texas. And, and you know, we're going to see if uh, Sarkeesian has any of that ability. Uh, but again, Clemson is tough to overcome. You know, it's, there's, there's no shame in losing a, a coveted commit to them. But you know, let's see if you can uh, make something happen. All right, man. That's a wrap on defensive ends. And we don't have a lot of depth at x backer or Jack right now. So is defensive end a major need for us? Edge rusher is a huge need in the class. Again, still paying the price for that three-man front that they've been running for a while. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to go from a four-man front to a three-man front than it is the other way around. Uh, so, yeah, there's, they're, they're lacking edges still. Uh, that's why David ABR was a big get uh, late in the cycle last year. They just don't have guys like that. Um, you know, Osai leaving a year early, uh, which, you know, good decision for him. It, it does leave a, it does leave a hole. Uh, we talked about Ray Thorne. He's, he's racking up sacks in practice. So at least in the immediate, they should be able to get by this year, but the future is bleak after that. So yeah, it's a huge need. Um, you know, along with offensive tackle, it might be the biggest need in the class. Got to get that pass rush, man. All right. So it's linebackers time. We only have one linebacker commit and Travell Johnson from Arlington Martin. A majority of the chatter about him is that he's really intelligent and a nice kid, and that's great. But how is he as an actual linebacker? Yeah, that other stuff kind of matters too, right? The athleticism and uh, well, I, what I like about him is he navigates the traffic really well. You know, he goes and finds the ball, which is a number one trait. It's kind of like uh, you know, when you break it down to the simplest thing, you know, quarterback needs to complete the ball, linebacker needs to go find it. Um, you know, he does that. He does that uh, against bigger bodies. He, he knows how to. He can play it right. And make the player he could play it wrong and use athleticism to make the play too. So, um, you know, I like him as that inside, uh, what they're calling a will, uh, to, to be the guy he's gonna, you know, if, if, if he ever breaks into the starting lineup, which is, you know, that's the whole idea behind taking him, um, he'll lead the team of tackles. Is that a guy? Next up is the non commits. First is Harold Perkins, the number one outside linebacker in the nation. What makes Perkins so coveted? One of the best evaluation tools for linebackers watching them if, if they play running back uh, gives you a good idea of the uh, the movement skills that they have, the change of direction, the fluidity, um, and you know go watch Harold Perkins film and uh, you know he's an offer. <laughs> it doesn't take much longer it doesn't take much longer than a couple of plays to see that that kid's just a special athlete, highly uncommon. Um, I'm not huge on rating guys as five stars just based off of athleticism uh, because it doesn't always translate. And uh, linebackers another one of those where it's uh, just being an athlete isn't good enough. You got to be able to see the plays and and uh, and, and read, read the offense. You have to understand where those blocks are coming from so you can defeat them. Um, so that's going to be the question mark about him. Uh, but he did show significant improvement between his sophomore year and junior year on playing defense. Uh, that athleticism is through the roof. How is Texas doing in the recruiting race for Perkins? Texas is making a big push for him. Uh, obviously, it's going to be just an insanely insanely competitive recruitment. Uh, the big news here is that he's going to take an unofficial visit in June for the big weekend. Uh, and it being an unofficial means that they've got an official visit in their pocket for when they really need it. Again, this one's going to take a long time to, to unfold. Uh, using an official visit right now would be unwise. You know, you need to be right there when it hits its crescendo and you need to be able to, uh, to get him in for an official visit and try to close it down. Close it down. Uh, right now, you're just jockeying position. You want to be in the top group. Um, and then try to be there when they make the turn and try to try to close it out. It's going to be very difficult. Um, you know, some of his friends are at a and I think that that would have a bigger impact if he was getting ready to take a take uh, to make an announcement now. Uh, but the longer it plays out, I think the less that that impact. Uh, uh, I think that the more that that impact is minimized. Uh, so, you know, it's just uh, he's a numbers buster. You know, if you hit your number at linebacker, you still take him if you can get him. Looking like an uphill battle for Perkins then. Next, we have Ish Harris out of Pilot Point. He plays running back in high school, but he would likely be a linebacker at the next level. So what's Ish's eval, and where is Texas at in the running? 
Yeah, there's some uh, little Jordan Humphrey to ish uh, playing running back. Again, you get to see that change of direction, uh, which, you know, he's a 6'3 kid and, and uh, you know, he moves like a much smaller person. You want big guys to play like small guys and you want small guys to play big. And, and he's a longer guy that plays like a shorter guy. Um, so, you know, right off the bat, yeah, all your, any concerns that you have about movement skills are, are, you know, ameliorated. You're not worried about that. You know, he's, he's, he's got all those movement skills you could possibly have. Now it's where do you, where do you best put him? You know, obviously he's not going to be a running back in college. Uh, it could conceivably be an inside wide receiver like a uh, little Jordan Humphrey was. Um, I like him on defense. I think he, I think he moves more like a defensive player. Um, you know, the Texas staff is 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 recruiting him for the Overshone linebacker position, which is obviously a smart sell because Overshone should be a pretty high profile player this year. Uh, I tend to think that he might grow into an X like we were talking about, that guy that zone drops and also pass rushes. Big question is, can they get him? And I'm not I'm not super enthused about UT's chances of getting him. I know that Sarkeesian has done a well, uh, 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 done a good job of recruiting them. Sarkeesian was the first head coach to uh, to reach out to him. Uh, at all these other schools that are recruiting him, uh, Sarkeesian has, has, has made good inroads in that school already. Uh, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough. I, you know, I kind of think that kid's going to end up at, at – yeah, I, I get an A&M vibe from that one. a and has been doing really well in recruiting lately. Uh, then we have Kip Lewis out of Carthage. So we've done really well with Carthage kids. So can we pull Kip? I don't think so. No, I, I, I don't think it's going to ha- happen for uh, Texas and Carthage just go around. Uh, maybe Kelvante Dixon can uh, can keep Texas in it, but uh, I think it's another one where you know uh, A and M or OU, maybe LSU are, are going to be in the mix. Um, he's got a sister that plays volleyball, so if maybe an opportunity opens up for her, uh, a twin sister, I should say. Uh, you know, maybe maybe that makes things a little more interesting. But you know, he's a good athlete. Not totally in love with his tape. I know uh, Coach Surratt is extremely high on him, saying he's the best defender he's ever had. Of course, that that means a lot, uh, given the success that they've had at Carthage. Um, but right now, he's more traits than, than than raw ability on tape to me. But, he, you know, those guys are hard to find. You know, linebackers, true linebackers that can play in the Big 12 that, that aren't uh, that aren't mismatched uh, routinely are, 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 are rare to find. And, and, you know, he does have some uncommon athleticism, and he's got a good frame. But I don't think this is going to work out for Texas, and that's why you know they offered a kid out of Utah today. They're probably going to keep having to uh, to kick over, turn over every stone uh, nationwide. What about Jeremy Patton out of Tenaha? Patton's another all-around athlete that you know projects to, to linebacker, but plays a little bit of everything in high school. Um, you know, you, you can use offense to evaluate, or you can use line, uh, uh, basketball. He's got a he's got an awesome clip on Twitter of him going down the sideline and taking it to the hoop and just mashing. Uh, not too many inside linebackers are doing that. Uh, to me, you know, I he's a bit of a tougher eval for me. Uh, I, I do wonder I, – I, I think he would profile more to that inside linebacker, and they already have Travell Johnson there. Uh, you know, I'm not sure that he is quite the athlete that they're looking for for the, the, Mar- the Marvin Overshow Mike role uh, that you've broken down previously where the guy's in space a lot. Uh, but if, he might have the arm length to play X, too. You know, that might be his best position, uh, honestly. Uh, very intriguing athlete. Frame is nowhere close to being done. He's about six two and a half, uh, two hundred fifteen pounds. Um, I could see him being a two hundred forty five pounder. And um, if if, uh, if your readers remember or, or your viewers remember Eric Fowler, uh, that might be the comp uh, from the twenty sixteen class, uh, where it's not not the biggest guy to play the edge, but plays with power and pop in his lower body. And then you know he does have good arm length. All right, let's take it out of state. Junior Tulamaca is a big name out of Mission Hills, California. He's the number three player at linebacker. So what are our chances with Junior? I have a bias against his body type for the Big 12. You know, it's nothing against him. Um, you know, I, I, and I said it when Deli uh, Adeoye uh, was uh, was committed to Texas and then signed. I was like, I just don't like it for the Big 12. You know, it's very hard to have that. Uh, that's why DeGabriel Floyd was a unicorn to me, and I had him as a, as a top 10 player in the nation. And those bigger bodies... You know, they're kind of dinosaurs for the Big 12. You know, you can mismatch them uh, pretty easily. Uh, there's just too much too much ground to cover for those guys. Uh, he does move well. He has some bounce to him, lateral lateral agility, good feet. Uh, how big is he going to get? You know, is he Delhi is it, or is he Ray Maluga? You know, if he's Ray Maluga, sign me up. Um, Texas is going to have to battle uh, USC and Notre Dame for him. Uh, but they do have a decent chance for him. You know, they're definitely in the, in the mix for that one. Next up, we have a rare two-sport athlete out of Reno and Robbie Snelling. So what's the latest news on Snelling? 
spent a good time on the phone with him last night. Uh, very, yeah, very, very good t- kid to talk to. I really enjoyed it. Um, sharp as you'd expect from a, from a kid that was committed to Stanford for some time. Um, I don't know how many left-handed linebackers that throw 94 miles per hour, you know, but that was the first one I talked to. Um, so Texas baseball is in it. Texas football is in it. He likes the idea of going to a school that has a rich tradition, a blended tradition of football and, and, uh, and baseball. Uh, you know, it's going to get drafted and then it's going to, you know, could, could come down to a financial decision between him and the family of what they want to do. But um, what he told me last night was that uh, college is his first priority. Uh, and, and, you know, that's that's what they're going to do if, if, if things go according to plan. But, you know, you know, when money's involved, you have to you have to weigh the costs and the, and the benefits and then go from there. But, um, yeah, Texas definitely likes them uh, as, as, a, as a linebacker. Um, and then Texas baseball really likes them. You know, left hander throwing 94. Just, a, just such a rare kid, you know. It was being a being a pitcher, and then you know, normally those guys are quarterbacks and don't get hit. He said, you know, the way to protect your body is to dish it out. And that rounds out the linebackers, at least for right now. Still a lot left to decipher there, and that picture will become more clear as the cycle progresses. So let's move on to the defensive back, starting with corner. We already have a commit there, and Jalen Gilbo out of Port Arthur. So what's Jalen's evaluation? I like this junior tape. You know, you couldn't tell a lot off sophomore film. Uh, you know, you'd see him at seven on sevens and stuff and, and, and like what you see, but sophomore film didn't show a ton. Uh, you know, junior tape, you could see him open it up a little bit more and, uh, and make some plays. Um, watching him in seven on seven, it's, it, it's, it's, it's really useful because, you know, you're matched up in some wide, with some pretty athletic wide receivers. And what I was noticing last time I saw him is he's got the ability to turn and run uh, pretty well. His, his top end isn't great, but he's got good feet, good hips, and you can get after it. You know, nickel might be his position long term. I don't know. Uh, his body type isn't the, the most conducive to corner. He's a bigger, thicker kid. Um, but, you know, I, I like his ability to cover in man. Uh, he's physical. Uh, yeah, he's, he's a good player. The other priority names at corner are also very exciting. First, what can you tell us about Bryce Anderson out of Beaumont? What makes him so dynamic that he can play pretty much at any DB spot? I know he even plays QB at his high school. Bryce's versatility makes them special. Uh, and then that speed, you know, <laughs> the athleticism, of course, that always factors in. But uh, as Jerry Hamilton puts it, he's got kind of a Quandre Diggs mindset. He's going to do whatever he has to for the team. Uh, he plays quarterback. Uh, quarterback lends to a different type of awareness uh, out there on the field. Um, you know, it, it helps you play defensive back. Um, his quickness, his, his, uh, his burst, his few, few, first few steps coming downhill are really impressive. Uh, he's got good hips. Um, you know, the big question with him is if he sticks at corner and, and that's really going to come down to, uh, how much he embraces the technical aspects of, uh, of playing the position. And based on what I just said, obviously he's going to go in there and try to maximize the corner. Uh, the good thing for him is, um, you know, where's his floor? We know he can play nickel. Okay. If that doesn't work, he could play field safety. So <laughs> the guy can play anywhere. He's going to find a home. It's just a matter of where they'll try him out at corner first if they can get him. So can they get him? Uh, well, you know, uh, Texas fell by the wayside when he committed to LSU and, and ba- basically quit trying. You know, they just kind of uh, were going to concede him to uh, to LSU. Uh, when he opened it up, by the time he opened it up, Texas had a new staff in place. He was like an A&M early on uh, after the decommitment from LSU. Uh, but Texas kind of barged its way in. And uh, right now UT's in a really good spot for him. Nice, man. Hope we can land Anderson. Another big name is the top corner in Texas and Denver Harris. He's a North Shore kid who is elite corner. The fans are ecstatic about Denver. So what makes him a must-get cornerback for us? Well, this is definitely one where fans are justified in being uh, being in a frenzy about because, you know, Texas is going to be in this one. It's going to be a Texas-Alabama battle uh, to the bitter end. You know, I know a and uh, is in the mix as well. Uh, I just, you know, I think if it comes down to proximity, UT wins out, and if it comes down to, you know, just, you know, SEC school or something for whatever reason, then Alabama will, will win out. Uh, but yeah, he's a lead corner, man. He's probably uh, might be the most gifted corner I've covered in that I can recall really um, exceptional quickness, good, good uh, lengths. Um, you know, he's got an interception uh, on his huddle from last year where he just hit the jets and it's just, just unreal, unreal speed, uh, good coverage ability. You know, uh, <clears throat> you know, he's well coached. My boy coach Regan's had him for, uh, for a couple of years before he moved on to Brooks Royal. Um, so so it's all there. The, 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 the total composite of being a lockdown uh, first round draft pick corner is there for Denver Harris. It's going to be a battle for Denver among some big time players, but I still like our odds there. So how is Texas sitting in his current recruitment? 
It, I've, I, I've liked UT's chances from the beginning. Um, you have to remember that, you know, I think uh, since Denver's become a recruit, UT's on its uh, third third defensive coordinator and uh, second or actually third third cornerbacks coach too. So uh, it's, it, you know, every year he's, he's getting to know somebody different. But UT has some things to its advantage. You know, I think the, the proximity uh, is, is a big asset for the school. Uh, you know, I think his mom likes Austin as well. You know, I've, I've never thought he was going to go far away from home. Never thought he was going to go out of state. But you know, you can't discount Nick Saban. Uh, you know, he's the best for a reason. You know, he's a he's a heck of a, he's, he's a top recruiter in the nation. He's got the skins on the wall. Uh, but I do like Texas to. Uh, I, I I don't know, man. It's just one man's prediction. I would predict Texas, but uh, but we'll see. There's going to be a lot of intrigue, and I'm sure that there's going to be some uh, nervous moments for uh, for everybody involved. But yeah, this is one that's going to be uh, every year. There's a there's a recruiter too. There's a little hysteria around. This won't be anything to do with him. He's not a dramatic kid. He doesn't even like the process, really. He just wants to be uh, be sure of his decision. Um, so fans are probably going to be, uh, be be on edge for this one, and he's just going to be cool and rehab and, and, and get back on the field. The corner talent this year is super impressive. So let's check in on Terrence Brooks out of Plano. So what's the word on Terrence? Terrence is a stud. This is another guy that uh, fans should be paying very close attention to. It's uh, – it, it's always a little bewildering to me that, you know, the, the fans that love recruiting the most, I don't think they actually watch the tape. I think they just look and see what the early uh, rankings were and go from there. Uh, to me, Terrence Brooks is a top 15 player in the state. And given the fact that he plays corner, he's a huge need. Um, kind of like Bryce Anderson, he could end up playing uh, any position in the secondary. High character kid. Uh, he's, you know, he studies the game. His father, he's got the genes. His father played uh, for the 49ers and won a couple of Super Bowls. Chet Brooks. Um, kid's a complete package to me. You know, I think he's going to be a corner. There's a chance that he ends up playing nickel or maybe safety. But uh, but this is another one that, you know, Alabama's after him for a reason. Obviously, there's probably a little uh, – there's a burr under Saban's saddle. You know, he lost his staff to Texas. He wants to go get some of these Texas kids and make life tougher for UT. Uh, and then you can't discount A&M. A&M's making a harder push uh, after, you know, they hadn't been too aggressive for a while there. Uh, but they're definitely uh, getting in the mix now. Of course, Chet, Chet Brooks played at A&M, so I don't think that legacy plays a huge part in it, uh, but I don't know for sure. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be an interesting recruitment. I, I like Texas in this one, but, it, you know, I, I will concede that that it's, it's hard it's hard to see that, that Alabama would miss on both Brooks and uh, uh, both Brooks and Harris. But independently of each other, I like, I like UT's chances with each. I'm super excited about all the corners in this year's class, man. So let's move on to the safeties now. We also have some exciting names here as well. We have a current commit in Brian Allen Jr. out of Alito. So what is the coaching staff like about BJ? Yeah, he's got a great frame, very athletic guy. Uh, it looks, it, it, it's really easy for him out on the field. It's one of the things, it's, it's an evaluation tool. Um, when guys are, you know, it looks like they're going 80 percent, not not putting out full effort, but they're still making you know great plays. <laughs> it tells you that there's something left in the tank that's going to transfer over to the college game. I think he has that. You know, it looks it looks real easy for him out there. It comes from a great football school, obviously. Uh, you like that about him. Um, you know, his his I thought his sophomore tape might have showed a little bit more explosiveness uh, to it. I had him ranked number three, I believe, in the state after that sophomore uh, year. Um, Maybe don't have him rated that high uh, now, but he's still a phenomenal player, a huge upside, um, probably a boundary safety uh, like we'll see B.J. Foster this year. Now we got to talk about Jacoby Matthews out of Louisiana, composite five-star and number two safety in the class. So what makes him so special, and how is Texas doing in securing Jacoby? Well, Jacoby is probably a good opportunity to talk about Terry Joseph for a second because I haven't mentioned him uh, with the Terrence Brooks and the, uh, the uh, Denver Harris recruitments. Even though he's a safety, uh, Terry Joseph's uh, 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 ties are, are helping out here. It's, you know, there's some coaching ties between uh, who Terry Joseph played for and, and Jacoby Matthews' is coach right now. Uh, Terry Joseph, those ties are proven to be pretty effective. Um, and obviously, uh, he knew Terrence Brooks really well when they were at Notre Dame. And that, that's something that's helped Texas out quite a bit. Uh, and that, that, uh, that, re that uh, recruitment, that pre-existing relationship is really big with the Brooks recruitment. <clears throat> Obviously, that's, that's what's really opened the door between Texas and, uh, and, and Jacoby Matthews. Normally, this kid would profile to LSU all the way, uh, or if not LSU, then the Southeastern Conference. He also likes Florida. Uh, you know, 
Inside Texas was the first to, to report optimism between Texas and Jacoby Matthews. Um, we think that we think a big part of that is uh, Terry Joseph, but also he's got a, he's got a very good relationship with uh, uh, with some other guys in the class that are uh, kind of leaning towards Texas as well. Jacoby would be a major addition to the back end. So we have some other names to hit on. What's the word on early enrollee Jared Kerr out of Lexington? Things have been quiet between Texas and Kerr uh, of late, I, I, but I do need to get back in touch with him. I haven't I haven't talked to him in, in a few weeks. Really like that kid. I think he's a, a field safety. Um, I think he's a really good player. I think he really fits the scheme that they're that they're going to employ too as a guy that they kind of move around. Really good athlete. Um, you know, some schools even like him at corner. Uh, definitely, he's a safety to me. Uh, he could you can make a case for him even playing running back for some schools too. Uh, so he's just a really good all around athlete, uh, really good all around kid, high character kid, uh, early enrollee as you said. Uh, you know, I. I think if I think if Texas had been all in on this one from the jump, they'd have a better better shot at it. Uh, I think it's run a little bit hot and cold as they as they recruit some other guys. You know, maybe maybe a little bit harder. I'm not entirely sure though. I need to, I need to catch up with them. I don't want to talk out of turn. Uh, I'm a big fan of that kid's ability. Uh, yeah, maybe a maybe a smaller had Jordan Whittington played uh, safety, but you know maybe been about a 195 pound kid instead. Uh, that's Jared Kerr. Lots of upside at safety. Smart football player. All right, so Texas needs to be way more consistent in his recruitment. Of course, the fans want to know about the number one safety in the class and Kamari Wilson out of IMG in Florida. Is it just wishful thinking when you hear fans mention Kamari in UT World? Yeah, I'm paying attention to Twitter way too much. You know, you know Twitter, Twitter's fine for top fives, top tens, whatever. Uh, you know, guys trying to get uh, likes and, uh, you know, new followers and all that stuff. I would, you know, if you sign up to Inside Texas, we'll filter that stuff for you. You know, just outsource what you should think in recruiting, and more often than not, you'll be rewarded. Uh, that's not one that to really be paying attention. Maybe him and maybe he'll take an official visit with Omari Abor and surprise everybody. Then we had a weird one in Landon Holoby out of Arlington. Looked like he was a total lock to us, and then flipped the script and went to Oregon at the last second. So, what happened there? Well, you know, I, I'm still trying to piece that one together. I, you know, I, I reached out to the father, and he was going to try to, you know, give me uh, what Landon Landon was thinking there. Um, I don't know. So my suspicion, since nobody got back to me, I'm not afraid to uh, to, to opine what I think happened. Yeah. Um, you know, two days later, uh, two days after that that miss on Holoby, it, it became pretty obvious that Brian Allen was going to end up at Texas. You know, we were like, wait, what's going on here? So, uh, you know putting two and two together. I think it, I think it was a numbers crunch and Texas didn't recruit them quite as hard uh, as Oregon. You know, that's, that's what I think. It, you know, they're, they're welcome to correct me on that. I don't want to talk out of turn or be incorrect. I'm, I'm always up for a correction, but yeah, just the way that, you know, right as we're trying to figure out how we missed on uh, Landon Holoby, you know, we started hearing that Brian Allen was going to commit to Texas. And so, uh, yeah. Thanks for clearing that up a little bit. It was super confusing when he switched like the last second, like the day before. So, Zooming out a bit, what is Joseph and Gideon's plan in this class of DBs? Well, I think it's pretty obvious that Texas at least feels good about the uh, options that it has on the table right now. You know, they're not they're not uh, knee jerk offering you know around the country or anything like that. So that tells you when when you see that. Well, I, you know, with this staff, it tells you something. With Tom would hang on for dear life and, and never set up contingency plans, but I don't think that's his staff. Um, you know, they're not getting antsy. They're sticking with their recruitments. They feel good about where they're at with some of these guys. They're going to be tough recruitments, but they feel like they can close them out. And, uh, you know, I think they have a chance to land the number one defensive back class in the nation. Number one DB class always has a nice ring to it. Overall, if we were to take the bird's eye view of the entire defense, what are the big priorities for this coaching staff with this specific recruiting class? They got to find some edge disruption, without a doubt. It's a huge need for the class, especially you know continuing that transition from a from a three man front to a four man front, especially now that they're employing two uh, sort of stand up outside linebackers. Uh, you know that's a big need. And then you know you've got to close out these high priority uh, recruitments uh, at corner. Um, you know you, you got to send a message to Nick that this is your state now. Um, you know you moved here for a reason, and you're going to defend the territory. Uh, and these are your players. So, you know, you got to land Denver Harris. Uh, you got to fight for Terrence Brooks. And uh, then you got to close out some of those other guys that you're already in good position with. And, you know, kick over some rocks, find some linebackers, and you'll be all right. Awesome, man. Thank you for coming by again. I always learn so much. And myself and the fans will understand what we are looking to do on defense this year, thanks to you. 
And uh, we're going to do it again super soon, man. But thank you for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me on. I'm really excited to be doing this with you. I'm uh, happy to be able to reach uh, a bigger audience. Um, tag me in if you have any questions. I joined up with, uh, with, with Homer Service. I want to be a bigger part of the community. <clears throat> so let me know if you have any questions. And uh, I'm pretty accessible. All right, gang, that's a wrap for the 22 defensive recruits. And I released the offensive 22 recruits video a couple days ago. So go check that out. Watch more of my videos here and consider joining as a channel member. And don't forget to sign up for free at Inside Texas until the spring game. And as always, hook them.